Ian, I'd like to announce our retirement from this pod. Thank you to everyone who has supported us for the last uh, 20 some odd years. We'll probably start some other businesses and spend time with our families. Mark. Yeah. yeah I think you're confused, man. That isn't Him? us. That's Tom Brady. Oh, I always mix that up. Okay. Um, I know. I'm you're sorry. so much like him. In that case, I'm going to announce we're unretiring. I'm retiring. We're unretiring. It's over. Yep. We're back. Yep. Guys. We're, we're back. back. Yeah. Sorry to have scared the wonderful folks out there with our micro retirement. Um, we still got a lot of content left and we want to be competitive on the, and we're going to be on the, on the field. Uh, the drive is still very much alive with us. Yes. Metaphorically, we're on the field. Um, but since we've raised the heart rate of all you guys out there, they were concerned. Crashing down. Let's bring it down by asking the question that has been going all around the internet. Okay. The internet fits. Are there more doors or wheels in the world? All right. So stay That's, tuned yes. for our answer in the recap. That's our hook. You got to wait. That's now. our hook. What are our three topics, good sir? As we alluded to, Brady's unretiring is our sports topic. Uh, mm-hmm. Finance topic I'm very excited about. I don't know if we're going to educate you, but I want to learn how to buy fine Lord art. Artist. And Love a wild it. card topic, the other <laughs> debate of the week is daylight saving time. Daylight could saving, not, not saving. Could not be more topical. Yes. This is this is huge. Yes. Uh, this is going to be the best one yet. I can feel it in my bones. My so soul. let's count this down. Three, two, one. Let's, Let's get, get into, into it. it. They got red hair. They really don't care what they talk about. They just want to have a good time. We'll talk it online. Let's get into it. Timing is amazing as always. Mark, Perfect. sports. So Brady announced he's coming out of retirement just six ish short that weeks. was a very, very after short retirement. retiring. It's like a vacation. I found for him. this kind of obnoxious and i like brady you can say that yeah for his yeah. first career i just don't know why is he doing it he seemed like the kind of guy who never talked about things publicly he always toted the company line he always said the right thing the non-answer to the media so why did he retire mm-hmm. if he really didn't want to he has nothing to prove right? absolutely nothing and now i'm negative things to prove his last year or years it's going to be like Peyton Manning, where he either gets hurt or plays like trash. <sighs> now Peyton did win, but still, he threw like a duck. His right? arm, he he didn't have an arm to throw yeah. with anymore. Yeah, I mean, he had a chance to leave on on relatively top, top of the world. Well, he could left the top of the world multiple times. He had kept coming yes. back. Yes, but yes. But his last still. season wasn't a wasn't a dud. Um, no, it if, was it was if incredible Ram, statistically. If, if his defense, if his defense could have stopped the Rams, yes, he was basically in the Super Bowl. They I mean, lost he, to the he had done champion. everything he had done. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was a it was a defensive stop overtime. Um, Cooper Cup. They didn't stop him, and he was on the bench. It, yeah. it was the defense. I mean, the stat line is impeccable. Twenty two NFL seasons. Mm-hmm. Obviously, twenty with New England. Uh, you know, full two decades. Fifteen time Pro Bowl selection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's not that interesting. But three time <laughs> AP MVP. Three time first team All Pro All Pro selection. All-time leader in passing You're yards, saying. passing touchdowns, QB wins. I mean, and that's probably perfect. that's probably I don't have this regular season and playoff probably right. Yeah, I mean, I've he is seen the entire Mount Rushmore. A very cool five thirty-eight article. I'm just thinking of this where they discuss the three mm-hmm. careers of Tom Brady and how each of his individual three careers. Each one is a Hall of Fame career. Is a Hall of Fame career. It's really incredible, right? There's like the early the young Brady. There's the Randy Moss era, and there's the Oh, I that was fireworks out the, there, man. The, the 20 teens plus Tampa, right? So I actually, yeah, that I mean, article was written, I think, before the Tampa win. So maybe there's a third, this is the fourth one. Anyway. Multiple at multiple Why? Careers. Why? Um, Why? I mean, yeah. So what's left to win? What's left to achieve? Um, Nothing. Is, does he just love winning? Uh, I mean, I mean, I think everyone loves to win. Maybe I think he can't stand his family. I don't know. I thought he was leaving for his been family. So many jokes about that, about asking <laughs> to do laundry and like, you know, take kids to practice. Yeah. I mean, obviously competing at the highest level completes him in a way that I don't think we, we can probably can't understand. I mean, him and Jordan are the ultimate competitors, right? Jordan um, being Michael, right? Michael, MJ, <laughs> little Mikey. Um, uh, practice, yes. games, they, they, they come to win. They are yes. furious. It's their they will whole bring, being. It's their whole ethos. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. I'd like to think that he can find 
some happiness and fulfillment elsewhere. I, I hope mean, there so. Has to, there has to be more because as well as he plays as a 40, whatever year old at some point you is stop. He, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I think he's like 46. We'll have to check that at the taping, but, <laughs> not, but um, he will be. Yeah. I mean, basically at some point he's going to have to find something else that, that can complete him. I know it yeah. sounds silly, but um, don't we all it's, it's unfortunately the truth with the physical game like this. So honestly, Mark, maybe the more interesting topic is yeah. why is he so dominant now? And frankly, he has been dominant throughout the better part of his 40s. Yes. At a time where most other quarterbacks, I mean, like three come to mind, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning. Yes. 35, 36. Boom. That's the I mean, plateau. That's the, it. I mean, yeah. Although Rodgers had a spectacular else. year. I mean, he had MVP caliber year last year. Right. But. I can't name other quarterbacks who are playing in their 40s. Well, you There's just, just did, no you historical just relevance. Just ben Roethlisberger, but he didn't. But his last his couple late 30s, years. And he looked he like he looked, like, he looked like he was old right. and broken. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to present here three reasons. Okay. You give your three. I'll give one or two afterward. (laughs) So lizard eyes, grit, okay. Avocado ice cream. Those don't seem related. Tell me more. So, so lizard eyes is the sideline to sideline vision, right? Mm. It's it's almost as if his left eye is watching the left boundary and his right eye and the right boundary. Yeah. And for that, you just practice it and age doesn't come into it. Age doesn't matter, right? That's it doesn't it doesn't almost entirely mental. It's not physical. It's mental. It's mental. Yes. And then the second one is this whole grit. grit. It's the relent it's the relentlessness. What a word. It's it's um it's how exact he is. He has a plan, he has how to execute it. If the ball is thrown low, it's thrown low for a reason. He just doesn't miss his target very often. And in, in an NFL where turnovers are such a huge component, mm-hmm. he just minimizes the mistakes to such a degree that when it's surrounded by talent, yes. it just elevates. And I always to win loved games. that about a quarterback who doesn't throw interceptions. Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, he Tom doesn't, Brady. He doesn't try to run trust for a first him. down. When it's not there, you take it's not the there. sack. You just sit on right. your butt, right? You trust your defense, you get the ball back. Yeah. Um, he doesn't guess. He has okay. laser focus. So and the grit, grit you know, for that age matters a little bit, but it's not as important. If anything, right? you gain grit with age, I would say. That's true. You're, he has the gaining, most reps. He's yeah. seen everything defenses can throw at him at this point. And then some. Yes. Um, and obviously he's smart enough to know that he has to extend his body yeah, Michigan by, being, by being safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has a very he has a he has a plan and he follows the plan. Okay. I mean, so that's two reasons. And then three is just like, he's a weird guy. He likes avocado ice cream. He doesn't eat strawberries. He doesn't drink coffee. Um, he believes in a lot of pseudoscience. But for some reason, the way that it plays, it, it actually works for him because I it shows like some people. some of it's legitimate. Like the coffee thing, I can see that being practical. The strawberry thing, that makes no sense. It makes no sense. Right. But basically, he has decisions about his lifestyle. And he's like, this is me. I'm going to do this, but I'm always going to be there. You can hold me accountable. And I'm going to, and these things are meant to maximize the things that have begot success earlier in my career. And that's what it is. It's so this it's like weird, like it's self-fulfilling prophecy right. because he did a thing and it gave him success. He attributed success to that thing, whether or not it actually played a factor. Some did, some didn't. Right. I mean, basic, and honestly, he's only played for two teams. If, you know, there, there's always arguments like, oh, if he was on the Jets, no matter how good he was or something, yeah. he's, not, he's still not a playoff guy. So, I mean, the Patriots were good. And the Buccaneers put a lot of talent around him. They did. But he's still special. Yes. He's still a special person. Yes. The, the TB12 method is avocado ice cream and silliness. I think it's snake oil. But the success yeah. is there. Here's my rebuttal. Not my rebuttal, Please. but my, my addendum or addition. He is successful because the game he plays, the NFL has changed to adapt to that style of play. Does that he's make in sense? The right, he's in the right position. Yes. Yes. This he, is a very take him and put him in the sixties. It's a different game. He'd get broken. Oh, he gets blindsided. He gets broken. And then he's he only also, had one injury. You know, really I love bad. the young. You know, the Cam Newtons like with their athleticism and they can run. It's exciting. But like those guys, they don't last into the second decade, right? No, because they lose a don't. step. Like I mean, how many yards has you and I probably have run more professional yards in the NFL than Tom Brady <laughs> has, right? Like We're close to it. If not every there, touchdown yeah. of his is just him jumping forward. It's about right? three inches. Yeah. Otherwise, his rushing year is probably a net loss. So his his game just fits in the style of play that is prevalent in the NFL these days. Yep. It's he's exciting to hard. watch. He's worked so. hard. He's been around good people, and there is obviously some luck to success. It, it's just, it's part of the equation. Yeah. Are we are we making predictions? Do we want to see what's going to happen? 
the problem with predictions is I keep thinking of a scenario in which he just gets crushed by somebody and torn ACL and, and, and then he's injured and the season's over and then he keeps coming back. Yeah. Um, or they're like 10 and seven. You they're see like your hero kind of broken or the middle of the road. They, they basically just, oh just missed the playoffs. 10 and 7. You keep playoffs. reminding me of the 17 I know, games. 17 games. So schedule. weird. <laughs> I mean, basically, I think the Buccaneers are a playoff team. I think Brady brings a lot of success. Yeah. Um, his wins above replacement, which is a baseball stat, is huge in the NFL. I mean, you saw when teams trade for quarterbacks, they're Vegas. I don't think anyone would Brady. argue that he's not a top 10 quarterback starting right now. He will. So. He will be in the league until he cannot perform at the highest level. And he thinks, and I think he's right, which is crazy to say, that at this point he can perform at the highest level. Yeah. Um, I mean, dream scenario is he has a great season, Super Bowl. He can finally retire. He can finally retire. Will he retire after that, that? Yeah. I mean, I don't see him retiring unless he unless that last game. Who's is coming back? Is Gronk win. playing with him? Gronk is a broken shell, right? I like, don't. I don't know. I mean, man. if he can get there, he probably will. He's more machine than man at this point. Yeah. So, I mean, by episode 100 of Let's Get Into It, okay, Brady still be around. That's one episode per week is two years. I'm going to take the over. Yeah. <laughs> two, man. I am two. Uh, time will tell. I look, I look forward to being able to give you guys the recap on that. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. Uh, finance business. What do we yes. got here? Uh, how to buy fine art. Basically, I wish somebody yeah. would do this story this for a us. Great topic. But we're going to do it for you. <laughs> gonna, yeah. So when I think about buying fine art, I think of an auction house and a gavel and Sotheby's. Yeah. Is that correct? I think a fancy pants event, you know, white glove, caviar. You, rich would, fit people, in, you would fit in well there, I think. I got my white shirt on. Yeah. Um, no <laughs> gloves, though. Uh, you know, people who have a lot of money who are grossly overpaying for too something. Much, too much money. Some of the art doesn't even resemble intelligible forms or figures. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I think the reason why this, this article is relevant is that even fine art is embracing technology in interesting ways now. Yes. So these auction houses yeah, have a foreshadowing. I did a little research and it's like, we could go register right now. I didn't I do it. I can't believe that you can do that. And I'm assuming you need to prove like you have money and you're not just trying to like launder something. But yeah, we could register to, to bid in person or online even. Do you think that they're just trying to appeal to more folks in different demographics than they would hitherto? Well, or, they can they can add um, credit card fees if you do it online, right? That's true. <laughs> Make an extra three. You can do it. Uh, I don't know what your, payments. Yeah, your credit limit is, but yeah. So I mean, you mentioned something here about you would never spend that kind of much money online, though, right? It's just uh, I mean, no. Even think Q about it. Is tens of thousands. I mean, if I've purchased something online, I can see people doing a computer, right? You did that yes. recently. Um, yes. I guess people do the Carvana model now. So yeah, it seems crazy to me. Tens still, or twenties or forties thousands. I guess it'd be financing just paperwork, but right. art is that, and then more. Um, I so mean, I don't there's think I, no, I don't there's could. really no cheap art at that level. Yeah, I mean, I think when you contextualize it that way, it, it does change how I feel about stuff. I mean, you know, TVs, okay, thousand dollars, but you know, uh, they, they I, can I, be I, sure. I do think about like AC furnace, roof, cars. Um, yeah, but paintings. I guess the one thing for paintings is they don't need as much upkeep or maintenance. Um, but you need like a place to hang it, I guess, and do appreciate it, or you just put it in storage. Uh, I don't know. I, art I, is weird. I guess if you're worried someone's going to steal it, the other angle is you go to the local art fair, the art show, and you purchase yes. items from the artist, the artiste, right? Totally so that's your, viable your primary pathway. market, not your secondary right. market. And people do. You can do that. It's been a yeah, few hundred bucks, couple hundred bucks on a Friday night. Maybe even up to so a couple thousand for something. When you do that, do you just, is it because you're supporting the artist? Do you actually like, yeah. if, it's, if it's a painting of a waterfall, I could, if I had excess money, see myself maybe buying that. And you that enjoy and it and you, and you walk it. by it in your house every couple of days. Or every How couple many hours times in your life can you do that though? The problem with you have too much money is when you have a big house, you got to fill the walls up with something, right? So they put paintings right. on it. I think this is a cool idea. I mean, this is definitely the less of an investment slash money maker and more of just a good feeling. You know, you, you want to support art and appreciate yeah. the process. Is that kind of art? Do you resell it? Is it an investment or is I it don't, never? I mean, I think a lot of this stuff just ends up at yard sales eventually, right? I don't, I don't, Oof. I don't think this is the kind of art that you buy to sell, but I'm yeah. sure that, I'm sure that art is, I'm sure art moves in the secondary tertiary market all it's the time. It's just, it tracks it, it appreciates in value in such a different way than a traditional stock market yes. or even real estate, you know? Yes. Unless it's a, unless it's a name, like a famous artist. It's I just not, think that yeah. your average painting. Yes. 
it doesn't it doesn't move. And if it's a if named it's, artist, you can't afford it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You found out something interesting though. Some yeah. Some ways that is more accessible, perhaps, for us. So basically, buying art as an investment yes. has pretty radically changed over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, art is a unique alternative asset. Um, it could add value to your portfolio. Um, it's also a good way to, I guess, diversify your portfolio. You know, very simply having things besides stocks and gold and it takes away the cards. volatility, or at least it's not right. on the it's on the same track. So if the stock market is going up and down, your art's not changing theoretically. Right. Right. And the fact that many investors, including ourselves, are locked out of owning a Monet, a Picasso, a Van Gogh. Yeah. There's a way now, though, pretty pretty interesting. Uh, Yield Street and Masterworks, they allow you to buy and sell fractional shares of different types of artwork. Fractional ownership. So you don't have to cut a check for $50 million to get the newest you know, Art Nouveau sculpture. You can but purchase a fractional share. I don't get to display it. Right. You don't get to do anything with it, Mark. I, I think just have that, I think that you're, you're 2%. Ownership. Your two percent at ten thousand dollars, with that fifty million dollar thing, appreciates seventy five million when it's sold. You would receive money. I mean, there's fees, there's there's brokerages, there's there's middlemen. It's not yeah. just like a one click option. But, but, this, but or this didn't exist. Yeah, okay. think it, but, right. but this is totally new. Like, I mean, even five years ago, the idea of owning a piece of a Monet, it, it wasn't it wasn't possible, right? Not and that then I obviously, know. obviously, they don't make new ones. So thing, right, the huge, huge, huge thing. We've, we mentioned it before is NFTs, non fungible yes. tokens. Uh, since the beginning, these have been art pieces. Um, obviously, these are non physical, yes, digital sort. forms of traceable and verifiable works of art. Yeah. Uh, the benefit of having a art NFT is you, its digital integrity is intact, blockchain, it's yours. Um, you can sell it. I mean, people trade NFTs. I don't know a ton of the inner workings of, of that process. We'll figure it out at some point. But, um, what so about, the idea, can I, can I yeah. buy, other than art and NFTs or paintings, can I buy like a marble statue? Can I get a bust of you and I? How do I get that? Do I commission I think it? the only way you're going to get that is if it's, a, if it's an unfungible <laughs> token. I guess um, you and I can make it out of clay, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the idea of, it's it's fascinating. I mean, but yes, I think that you can. Um, I have never seen someone buy a sculpture. I've seen plenty of people at, you know, different places buy paper art or yes. I guess hangings Most, yes. but so i mean yeah basically we mark you yes. and i we okay. could jump on the emerging bandwagon of commissioning nft artists to create pictures collages uh beeple, beeple. he sold 69 million dollars worth of this his everyday collection yes where it was every day he created a piece of art it was digital and then he sold them i think as a as a package if i'm not mistaken yeah and it was uh, it was like a year or 5 years or 10 it years worth really it, was interesting. Like, it, was a, it was a huge collection it was you know and the attractive thing for the art nfts is that they give artists the opportunity to sell their work directly to consumers mm-hmm. and they give individual investors access to these pieces in an open marketplace not just collectors or auction houses right. or um, intermediaries so so you and i defi- depending on how we define fine art Yes, that's we my could question. Possibly, we could possibly be part of this. Do NFTs count as fine art? To me, <sighs> the answer is, is no. Tough. This is tough. Yeah. I mean, it takes skill. It takes talent. It takes creativity to do yes. NFT. I think it's important to recognize It doesn't that. take years of diligent craft with an oil and a canvas like Picasso or Monet or you know Da Vinci would have taken. That's the difference yes. to me. I mean, I think that for right now, 2022... We need to talk about fine art and digital art very it's differently. Art, not fine art. Maybe I don't know. I maybe do being... think that I do think that the gap will shrink, though. I yeah. think the definitions will get murkier, especially as the NFT thing plays out. Because um, I'm thinking, like, what if somebody spends three months with a digital stylus creating this beautiful piece of work? They edit. They there's some they're 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 modifying it. Um, Here's a problem. Maybe, maybe that's the same thing as a three month canvas of a landscape in upstate New York. Well, I don't, I'm thinking I don't know. of this right now because that landscape in upstate New York, it's as big as a wall in a museum, right? And if it's created for your little computer screen, I mean, what maybe do you that's do with the it? issue. Maybe the screen has to be bigger to, to um, I mean, endure, draw pixel by pixel to like understand it point, and display it. Right. I mean, at some point, art is meant to be displayed. It's meant to be, it's meant to be visually viewed. If you have an mm-hmm. NFT on your phone in this sort of subfolder, Honestly, maybe like if you think about what art even represents, that's not 
that's not really art. Not it's sure just, what art it, represents. I never did well in art class. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, I'm not emotions, sure I could create. I don't feelings. think anything I could create would be worth more than three dollars, <laughs> except for perhaps this podcast. That's definitely art. Yeah, I mean, uh, even at South by South South by Southwest, uh, Zuckerberg announced Instagram. You're going to be able to get um, and purchase NFTs and, and view them and stuff like that. So that's it. Make it accessible to maybe this and you maybe a screenshot a of us here. A yeah. screenshot of us could be someone's avatar. I'm Perhaps. not sure what, what that person would be doing with that, but <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> A fascinating story. I think yes. I think you did a good job of getting the public invested in this whole. We're scratching movement. the surface. There's more to come. I think so much more. Okay, our Let's... wild card. This is a this is a doozy. Yes, pivot hard. The debate over daylight saving, and again, it's daylight saving time. I'm going to mess that up at savings, least four times. But don't call so... us out on it. Um, I've seen it in every article and news oh story the last week or two. We lost an hour of our lives, and then a couple senators jumped into the debate, and boom. The Senate passed a bill or Super resolution. This is everywhere. Now the House and we'll see what every happens house, next. Right? Every house talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, hold your clocks, folks. This week, senators made a unanimous vote, which is unheard of, to make daylight yeah. saving time. Bipartisan permanent. agreement. <laughs> yes. So this is next year, by the way. So next year, if this bill passes the House, daylight saving time will be permanent. We will not be doing this whole two- Two times a year, jumping back and forth, right? Yep. So maybe your poor oven clock, it won't Am have I? to be wrong for six months a year. Uh, uh, hey, what's, the, I, what's the clock in your house, Mark, that's never right, or at least not right all no, the time? The last couple of years, I'm actually really good about it because I had my cell phone that changes for me. So I walk downstairs, I just do boom oven, boom microwave, and the first yeah. one in my car. When I change it one direction, it's one button. When I change it the other direction, it's interesting. It's 11 buttons. <laughs> 11 buttons that's ridiculous i go around yeah i i mean for me the oven clock and the microwave i don't even really need to, them to be a clock i Why want do them they to have exist a temperature on the appliance timer. yeah they're silly yeah i think it's you know and, and they're always on both phones are automatic it, now. every house these days are set on top of each other so it's goofy but yeah so nearly half of the u.s states already have passed laws to make dst okay the spring the spring forward period at least we're in now permanent if congress allows it impossible trivia question mark but can you name the two states that don't observe DST time? Before last week, no. But this week, yes, it's Arizona and Hawaii. And I think yes. parts of Indiana and also not parts of the Indian yes. reservation so in there Arizona. Are, there are places caveats in, everywhere. Yes, there are caveats. There are places in states that don't observe. But cool those two fact states, I also read. I didn't know nothing. this. Yeah. China has one time zone for the entire country, which if you think about it, is like it the, is same, ridiculous. the same it's, width or breadth as the U.S. It can't That's possibly work. It can't possibly work well. I mean, someone's someone's getting more daylight than somebody else. If you're obviously. in the sweet spot in the middle, <laughs> yeah. right? I think it's I think it's Beijing. I think it's I think it's the cap the yeah center of the capital there. Um, but yeah, that's that that's a crazy fact. I mean, so Russia where, must have twelve oh, times. I don't know. Yeah, I think it where's, does. I think that's twelve. Where's the debate coming from? What's the so origin story way back here, when the 1900s? Right? Picture before, yourself yes. in your top hat and your cane before clocks. A British architect floated the idea of shifting clocks so that the summer days could be longer. Sounds good. Nice idea. Beautiful yeah. idea. It didn't really catch on, though. It did, But it wasn't until the Great War that mm -hmm. it actually caught on. Uh, Germany was the first to adopt DST, touting its energy-saving benefits. Everything so, is always so, for so the war So from the beginning, efforts, it's right? always been either the war or energy. It's been yes. finance. Production, energy, Production, production, production. And yeah. then the UK, France, and then us, the US, okay. followed suit. Uh, yeah. But messing with the clocks has serious consequences. Grave consequences. Grave. What are three consequences, Mark? I'm going to list three that we are shamelessly borrowing from Robin Hood Snacks, another podcast we enjoy. Here yes, they are. Yes, Closing yes. time for retailers. When the clocks turn back, so do the profits. Apparently, mm -hmm. shoppers spend 4% less in the month after DST. Okay. Okay. 4% is, that's, that's something. That's a big number. In this spring. dollars. Apparently, when adults lose an hour of sleep, it adds up to a half a billion dollars in lost productivity. I mean, everybody hears the this at work. It's, it's right? last Monday at work. Yep. Everybody and their uncle said, oh, I'm tired. I lost I an hour of sleep. My life's ending. I can't, so I can't focus. I can't focus. That's the focus. spring. In the that's fall, the SAT scores, which is ironic because I feel like the SATs are relevant now, dropped 2% after the time change and the extra dark. Hour of darkness. This is the big one for me. Yes, this is the big one. Increased depression by more than 10%. That's legitimate. 
you've heard the depression thing. Yeah. Seasonal, seasonal it's disorder. Seasonal, yes. Um, affective disorder. It's the same thing. It's, it's hard waking up. It's, your right. body has a hard time waking up when it's really dark outside. It's just yeah. not good. No. Um, so yes, students didn't do as well. And adults didn't, didn't do as did, well. Didn't feel as Businesses well. didn't do as well. But the, the takeaway mark is that people have spoken. We've, um, okay. 70%, seven in 10 Americans hate mm -hmm. changing the clock. That's, but yeah. we've been here before. Yes. 1973. We 50 did years this ago. change. Yeah. We made DST permanent. Yeah. What's being uh, they're doing right now. Proposed. The house. Yes. But after pre sunrise car accidents increased and energy savings weren't huge, once again, energy, productivity, money, money. Congress nixed it just nine months later. So not even a full year. They did it. They they did it. And then so they Congress it. agreed twice. <laughs> they read twice. Yes. So this leaves. So here with me, 50 years later, it's popular to complain and to want the single time system. I know. But the disagreement, it's not going to be, it's not going to be over. Um, I mean, that's the biggest thing to me is I'm tired of talking about it every six months. And here we are doing a pod on it. So I'm like, yes, yeah. let's do this. Let's change it. We can stop talking about it. But I researched for the story. The points you raised, the idea that parents would have their kids sitting, waiting for the bus going to school in the dark their entire school yeah. year. Mm -hmm. and actually, I don't think I'm for it. I think I like it the way it is. I'm going to maintain the status quo. Yeah. I mean, my two final thoughts are- I didn't expect that. Yeah, crazy. My two final thoughts on this would be when you gain an hour, no one complains. People obviously love it. Yeah. When you lose the hour, you have three or four days that are annoying. I get if, that. If that- I get that. And it's, it's only annoying because you had something that you you woke up with some some relative lightness and now it's darkness. But that's it's the on, only real change. It's on like that Saturday to Sunday. It's on the weekend. So who like I don't even notice it. Right. Yes, I agree. Daylight savings. Expect this to be a big issue every six months in perpetuity. I gotta say. Nothing's gonna change. We'll see. To the recaps. Yes. Take away for us, Ian. Retire and retire once. Shame on you. Mm -hmm. retire and retire twice shame on us yes retire and retire three twice three times <laughs> well you are gonna fool us three times mr Brady. this is it yes next time you retire we just are pick, not talking about it pick it <laughs> uh finance never never say never but i don't think i'll own fine art i will never own fine art if we do, it'll be oh. a fraction of one. Yeah. Like the maybe. upper left-hand corner of the nice uh, Monet. I want like six, pic six pixels in the corner. Six pixels. Yes. You can buy part of an FT. Yes. Um, so uh, the, the daylight savings. We'll debate the health, wellness, and personal effects of daylight savings forever. Yes. No bill is going to end the conversation. If anything, it will add fuel to the fire. Which we'll need because it'll be dark out. So. <laughs> Very good. Um. Help us grow, guys. Like and subscribe. You know where to find us. Um, YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or let's get into it. And if you have a free second or two, also check out our Facebook page and talk to us. Tell yeah. us what we're doing well. Facebook is fun. More. Lots of interaction. So Lots of opportunities. Um, so uh, let's count it out. This has been three, two, one. Let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Perfect. Once again. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The content in this podcast is not intended to be a research report, financial or life advice, and does not constitute an endorsement of any product, service, individual, or organization.